सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकवाहै तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओ शाशाशा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम since three of you are new you could turn your cell phones off or mute them and let's chant from the first shloka through 14th shloka no 15th shloka कर्तुराज्ञया फल कर्म किं पर कर्म तजड़ कृतिमहोदद पतन कारण फलमशाश्वत गति निरोधक ईश्वरापित नेच्छया कृत चिशोधक मुक्ति साधक कायवांगमन कार्यमुतम पूजन जपश्चित क्रम जगत ईषधीयुक्त सेवनम अष्टमूर्तिदेवपूजन उत्तमस्तवादुच्चमंद चिज जप ध्यानमुतम आज्यधारया स्रोतसा सम सरलचित विरलतः परम भेद भावना सोहमीसौ भावनाभिदा पावनी मता भावशून्य सदसुस्थि भावना बलाक्तिरुतम हृस्थले मन स्वस्थता क्रिया भक्ति बोधा निश्चित वायुरोधना मन जालपक्षिवोध साधन चित्तवायवश्चिक्रियायुता शाखयोर्दी शक्तिमूलका लय विनाशने उभयोधने लयगत पुनर्भवती नो मृत प्राणबंधनाकचिंतनाशमेत नष्टमसोत्कृष्टिन कृत्यमस्ति कि स्वस्ति यृश्यवारी चिमात्मन चिदर्शन तत्वर्शन सो वी हेव सीन सो फार द माइंड देर आर टू एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इट विल्ड एंड अनविल्ड अनविल्ड देर आर इनफ लेयर्स ऑफ टेंडेंसीज विच बॉइल डाउन इन द फॉर्मैट ऑफ लाइक्स एंड डिसक्स and they trigger any which time with whichever pattern that it seems important whether it is appropriate inappropriate whether it is timely or untimely it doesn't matter it just pops out and we don't seem to have any sort of control over this aspect the other aspect of mind is when we have 
the organs of perception perceive the world of objects and the mind synchronizes them, identifies them, tags them well. It is like you, know, you have a YouTube video and you want it to be going viral. So, what do you do? You have to have intelligent tagging. Anybody who wants to access that with whatever format is in their mind, generic mind, they should be able to identify it and tag it. Similarly, our mind constantly as soon as it, it perceives something, it tags and you can observe the moment we cannot tag anything, there is something which is staring at us or something that you are looking, it is for the first time that you are looking at it and uh, it is a strange looking thing or a new thing that you are looking at and you cannot figure out what exactly it is. So, there is an inquisitiveness born because I have already registered this thing, but what do I register this thing as? So, whether it is yours or not, you start meddling with it. Have you seen yourself, have you observed that if something is new, you cannot you know you cannot restrain you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you want to know it because it has to tag, it has to put that branding in it. This is what I think it is. The mind works in that pattern to recognize the world outside. Thankfully, this is something which happens flawlessly. Therefore, we do not need to mend with it. That is why when I look at his creation, his meaning Bhagwan's creation, I am awestruck every single time looking at things that he did not let us mess around with. For example, he has kept eating as a voluntary task, whereas breathing he has kept it as an involuntary task. Imagine what would have happened if those processes were reversed, if eating was involuntary and breathing was voluntary, probably very few of us would have survived. Do we even remember breathing? Suddenly while communicating, suddenly something falls or walking falls, what happened? Forgot breathing. You can survive forgetting eating. Has it ever happened that you had some deadlines? You had lot of time, but you you waited till that deadline and then uh, you have to really cram it up and then you forget what time it is for food. Imagine that to happen with breathing, thank goodness it is not in our hands, it happens automatic. Similarly, in the thought process, the assimilation of data and converting it into an experience is a, is a seamless process. But there are different thoughts that originate in our emotions, thoughts and ideas that originate and we have absolutely no clue where they come from. There are two methods, one you can put it to liar, therefore there are some people that I see very strange when they are in extreme pressure. Do you know what is the convenient thing that they do? They go sleep. Seriously, if I were in that position, probably I would not I couldn't get sleep because of that pressure. Until I have, I have finished that, I probably would not fall asleep. But there are these amazing people that I have come across. I have intention, I have to go sleep. There are other methods to dull the mind, to put it to liar and we are quite familiar with those methods, right? What are the methods to dull the mind? Drugs, medication, alcohol, all these substances, substance abuse can be included in that category you can dull the mind, you can put it to liar. 
but then after a few hours it is back again you cannot avoid it but a better way to deal with it is vinasha <clears throat> to find the root cause and completely annihilate that root so far we have seen how to do it now moving forward drishya varitam chittam atmanah chitva darshanam tatva darshanam this and from the last shloka onwards it was uh, it will grow into complicated uh, concepts so pay attention and put this in your homework so that you don't forget it because after a year when you look at it uh, i know we went through this i don't really understand what exactly was the point here till last now it's not strange even arjuna there was a message given by bhagwan krishna to arjuna and what is that message called bhagavad gita <clears throat> so after the war was done all the kauravas were annihilated pandavas took over the reins reestablished hastinapura reestablished their kingdom they did ashwamedha yaga no sorry rajasuya yaga i was quite successful one day bhagwan krishna was still in hastinapur and arjuna had finished all his job all his responsibility he was also with lot of time on hand then he sits next to the lord and he says lord you remember on the battlefield you are telling me some awesome stuff it was really inspiring but you know don't hate me i don't remember a word of it can you please repeat the whole thing again i am glad arjuna was speaking to bhagwan krishna if he was speaking to me i would have taken anything in my hand and whacked him how can you forget such an important message so there is another time geeta given and it is called uttara geeta so similarly such mishap can happen if you don't jot it down so what does this shloka say drishya <clears throat> varitam chittam atmanah chitva darshanam tatva darshanam the entire process of experiencing something what is the step by step process that is included in it so for example what is this everybody agrees with what is it a water bottle <clears throat> how did you know that this is a water bottle why is it not a missile what sir you are told uh, don't give me that answer that you were told this is a water bottle hence therefore it is a water bottle there are so many things that you are told and you don't believe them or you don't think in those patterns so how are you sure that this is a water bottle ah you have not just seen it but you have also experienced it you have also used it but before we get to that recognition part there are many steps that happen in between this is the usual experience the reason i have to go through this usual experience is the complication starts afterwards because what we are talking is not a usual experience therefore understanding the usual experience and the uh, intermediate steps in between is a necessary know how close your eyes seriously close your eyes now tell me what is this you can't open your eyes i didn't have anything you can watch the video later <laughs> i didn't have anything i just asked a arbitrary question 
to perceive that question, to understand that question or to it, 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 it to make a sense inside. It is not just the recognition, before the recognition can happen, your organs of perception have to perceive it. And your organs of perception have to be healthy enough to perceive it. Supposing uh, you wear uh, very high density glasses, what do you call them, high power glasses and you are not wearing those glasses. Yeah, no, all that I can think of is your example Sridhar. <coughs> you want to participate in an experiment? No, there is nothing to be hurt. So, take your glasses off. How much is this? <laughs> Did you hear what he said? I said, how much is this? His, his answer was, you are just an orange blob. Because I did not even raise my hand to give him a number to say that, you know, recognize how many numbers are these. So, for your eyes to function, if they are not in a right condition, like when you wake up, okay, that is the most amazing experience when you wake up and you want to see and everything is like hazy, like you know, little twinkle stars in between. Do you see? Or you wake up and then in a fresh, you have to really rub your eyes and then readjust them and then okay, now I can perceive it. And if you are with some kind of uh, adjustment required, then you have to put those glasses. So, you need that equipment, you need the eye. So, first you need the glasses. Is there anybody here who is not wearing contacts or uh, glasses? Hmm. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, it's cheating. <coughs> but still, you're not wearing either one of them. You have repaired it. So you need that repairing equipment. Then the eye. There are many times that your eyes are open. But yet, you are not cognizing that which has to be cognized. It happens in a boring lecture. Somebody is, you know, wah, 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 wah. And suddenly they ask, they see that you have tuned out and they pick exactly, the teachers have that knack to pick the most tuned out one for asking questions. Yes, you. And somebody on your side has to poke you. <laughs> yes. So, what is left? What is left? What is left from what? Your eyes were open, your ears were open, but what was happening in front of you? There was no cognition. So, it is not just enough if you have your glasses on, if, you, if your eyes are open, but there is something that connects your eyes and the data that your eyes receive. There is something that connects it. That connectivity is the mind. That is why they say body present, mind absent. And from uh, the, the speaker's perspective, it is one of the most uh, hilarious Kodak moments to watch of the audience. And the tough job is to maintain a straight face and not laugh at them. Because the kind of face that comes, it is very common, if they are tuned out, <laughs> it is a universal mudra. You have dance mudras, right? Similarly, this is tuned out mudra, completely tuned out. Because the mind is not connecting the data which is receiving through that sense organ. So, you need the corrective instrument, then the organ of perception, then the connection is the mind. Sometimes your intellect is busy calculating something. It is not here, your mind has received it, 
but it is not able to cognize the information as to what it has received. So you are uh, disoriented sometimes and then somebody says something, and say, can, you, can you say that again? What, what do you mean? Can you say that again? Why? Mind received the information, there were some words that you heard, but they did not mean anything because the intellect was not there to process it. So, the intellect also has to be there. And these many steps are required in between, which happen very seamlessly to cognize a small piece of data. Like I pick this one up and you all uniformly said this is a what what. And how fast was the information? Pretty fast. But in giving that piece of information, the usual way of understanding the knowledge is the organ of perception should be available. The organ of perception should be connected with the mind. The mind receives that data and the intellect processes that data. That is how you cognize what is in front of you. This is the usual process of assimilating knowledge or knowing. Here in this shloka, we are talking of a completely different process of knowing. Therefore, it becomes complicating. <clears throat> Drishya varitam chittam atmanaha chitva darshanam tattva darshanam. Drishya varitam, Drishya varitam, there is no more object to be cognized. Like here, what did you cognize? This was an object, right? There is an object and you cognize the object. Drishya varitam, there is no more object. Once you close your eyes, you have withdrawn your sense perception. There is nothing more to observe there, drishya varitam. There is no drishya, there is no object either outside or inside. What is the inside object? Any thought, any comment, any word, any feeling, any idea, these are also objects in the internal world. Even that has been stopped through the earlier process. If you connect it with the earlier shloka, what did the yogi achieve? Laya vinashane ubhaya rodhane. Do you remember the shloka? So, laya is one process and vinasha is one process. So, you have completely annihilated the unwilling mind. So, there is no more object there available. The mind is still there. It is available, it is alert, it is vigilant, it is alert. But there is nothing to cognize, nothing to, there is no object anymore there. Drishya varitam. Now, what happens is chittam atmanaha, <clears throat> the mind merges into the self or consciousness. It is not merging into deep sleep, that we very well know, because we know only two effective uh, patterns. The mind involves itself with the world outside actively, gets tired and sleeps, gets tired of sleeping and then starts actively thinking. But we are creating a third phase, wherein the mind is available, mind is alert, mind is vigilant, mind is, in, mind is, but there is no drishya, there is no object to perceive and indulge in. It is available and it has been merged into, it has been, it has become one with the conscious principle. It is at this time a realization happens. 
what is the realization to know that i am i don't need the mind to exist to know that i am existing i do not require the mediation of the mind to tell me or the intellect to tell me that i exist which reveals that i the existence is not a conceptual theory of the intellect is it becoming too much to handle <laughs> it the the realization that happens that's why i'm not putting it in words wherein uh, it realizes then your question will be who realizes if the mind is not there the realization happens what is the realization that happens that in order to know that i exist i do not require an intellect's help or the mediation of an intellect therefore the realization culminates into the understanding that i am not a concept of the intellect so what is this practical application in our day to day life this is exactly the difference of a western philosophy and eastern philosophy eastern philosophy uh, tries to identify the concept of you and tries to enhance and bring glamour into that identity or concept of you so you have to tell yourself i am confident i can do this i am not that bad i am little bad i am not you know i look beautiful starting from the physical part i look beautiful i look smart i look handsome whatever is the so you have to feed yourself that to create that concept whereas the eastern philosophy is saying that all concepts come to an end <coughs> therefore anything that you can think saying that i am so and so is nothing but a concept and those concepts are nullified so what is the process of meditation is not to become somebody but is to become a nobody it's not to become a hero but to become a zero therefore many don't even want to walk this path why because the end goal is total destruction total annihilation of whom of any concept of the i ahankara the ego so why would some why would the ego allow any such process that can annihilate its existence into practice therefore even after having been shown clearly logically that your puja your japa your dhyana your swadhyaya your uh, scriptural study will help you grow there will be umpteen reasons that the ego will churn to stop you from practicing it and then our question is why is sadhana becoming so difficult you understand the reason now why is the sadhana difficult the sadhana or the process is not difficulty the difficulty is in the ego letting go of itself and every seeker has to go through that scary moment at least once in life wherein as the ego you see yourself oh my god it's 
truly annihilating myself. Do I really need to do this? Am I not happy with the other things out in the world? Should I do this? There is a sudden blankness that envelops, a scary blankness. Because the other side of that experience I have never, I have never known. The intellect cannot fathom what that experience is. They are scared. The people who run away from the seat of meditation. I am not making this up. When they advance to that particular stage, people run away from the seat of meditation. Why? Because you have to now finally face that moment wherein you are ready, willing to annihilate any concept of that ego. So, when finally the mind merges into the self, into the consciousness, a realization happens. What is a realization? I, the existence, am not a concept of the intellect and I do not require the mediation of intellect to recognize and let me know that I exist. In fact, the intellect can function only as long as I allow it to function, I, the conscious principle, allow it to function. So, I am not a concept and I can break, shatter, rebuild any concept confidently. All the trauma that we talk about is only at the mind level that it is still clinging on to. Even that can be you know completely flushed out, you can recreate because it is just a concept. So, that was the first practical application. Well, the second practical application is the moment I realize that I do not require the mediation of the, my intellect or mind, internal equipment to ascertain that I exist. How I exist as, I start seeing it independent of any situation or any experience. Presently, how do I exist? As the heat of the situation starts increasing, the pressure in, inside increases and I start swinging according to that situation and the pressure that it develops, does not it? As long as you are in school, there was a pressure of your homeworks to be submitted or the grades to be maintained because we are on the brown community. <laughs> 3.7 is not sufficient. How much should be the GPS? No, what do you call it? GP? A, GPA. How much should be the GPA? Four point oh. I recently met uh, a doctor, <coughs> a neuro, not neuro, a dermatologist and he was saying that the kind of environment that he grew up while he was growing up in this country. So, he was saying that <clears throat> his dad promised him that he will get him a car if he is a, a valedictorian, is that the right word? Who is the second one? What is it? Salutatorian? Salut whatever. Salutatorian? Did I say it right? Kind of, okay, you got the message. So, his dad said you have to be the valedictorian. And because of the courses, advanced courses that they were taking, they were already making a GPA of 4.3 plus. 4. Point, oh, is like you know, it is already crossed. Because of the courses, you could, you could do more than 4.0 if you are doing a college level uh, courses. Between him and the valedictorian, he did not he didn't, uh, get the get to be the valedictorian. There are only two of them competing and he missed it by 0 0.01 percent. And his dad says, well, you missed your car. <laughs> you 
you get the point? So what defines you is that pressure and in that pressure you succumb. Now who is under pressure is the intellect, is the mind. The moment I understand that my very existence is not controlled by this mind and intellect, do you think the pressures of the environment developing in my intellect will bog me down? You find true independence right at that moment, the moment you realize that I am not a concept of my own intellect. Drishyavaritam chittam atmanaha. <clears throat> there is so much of depth just in those two words. Drishyavaritam chittam atmanaha. Her question, Ambika's question is that uh, she can understand the mind being under the pressure of the situation, but how is, how does it translate uh, the intellect being under pressure? Now the intellect being under pressure is when say you do not have a clarity of direction and it is vital at that very point that you decide this side or that side and you do not have a clarity. Give what? It should, but at that point when it cannot give you that clarity, like Arjuna's thing was dilemma was intellectual uh, lack of clarity. On one side he, know, he knew that righteously he had to stand up and fight that war, on other side he had a confusion that you know I will be killing my own people, should I, should I not? So whenever there is that existential uh, question to be or not to be, that is the intellect getting under the pressure. I am just taking one trivial example too so that you can understand. <coughs> The lack of clarity is still in the intellect. That being drawn to the emotions of the mind, yes, emotions that those are the people that I am attached to, that is in the in mind level. But where is the confusion? It is in the intellect. It was for this day to face them that he had prepared for 13 years. He had acquired all the, uh, the weapons of mass destruction, WMD. Brahmastra, Pashupatastra, all the astras and shastras. So he lacked that that momentary lack of clarity. So that is the pressure that the intellect will develop in. You know there is something right to be done, and by doing so you may temporarily hurt that person. Should I? Should I not? these kinds of confusions in the intellect is the result of the pressure developed inside. And once you know that these, these concepts do not define me, I do not succumb to them, but I can objectively start pursuing them and find the root cause of lack of clarity. Drishyavaritam right? chittamanatmanaha Chitva darshanam, tattva darshanam.
what is the difference between actually experiencing that stage without the intellect? Because now what we understand is intellectual. I can only say one statement. You will know it when you get there. <laughs> because it is such an abstract statement which your intellect cannot fathom. Any words put together to exp explain that experience, the intellect will fail to describe on my end, let alone the intellect to grasp it at your end. Therefore, when you get there, you will know it. Similar to how do you know that you are full when you are eating? No, but do we stop there? We do not. You know exactly the point wherein as when I was young, I know that you know my grandmother used to make very good dosas. I do not know what the combination was, we called it as paper dosa, right? it was really thin and that day I must have eaten about 16, 17 of them. <laughs> I was wearing a pajama and had eaten 16, 17 of them and it was like you know, a glutton the sitting and eating with all that and I was feeling really thirsty after that. Uh, especially after dosa, you feel really very thirsty. So, I drank uh, four or five glasses of water on the top of it. I had such severe stomach ache and my complaint was, why did you make dosa so good? <laughs> and her point was, I may have made them good, but you have to stop understanding where you can handle. Beyond a certain point, it will start hurting. At that age, you know, probably I was three and a half, four year old or five year old. I didn't even know. I didn't even know when to stop. It happens. No, Swami, this is unusual. It doesn't happen. A five year old eating 16 doses. Well, don't go on the number. <coughs> you get the point, right? But now you know exactly when to stop. Whether you stop or not is a choice different, a totally different ball game. So, if you don't be painful at real age, why are those higher level needs in our body? Ah, good question. If we do not require the intellect to realize all this, why do we need all this higher level Vedanta? Vedas themselves say, Yatra Vedaha Avedaha Bhavanti. Having reached to this experience, even the Vedas get trivialized. So, why do we need all this high level Vedanta, high level knowledge? Until this clarity is ascertained by the intellect, it will keep pestering you with questions. To remove all those doubts is the purpose of. Shastra Vichara, to remove all kinds of doubts. Therefore, Shastra Vichara has to be done regularly. Just by closing your eyes and sitting and straight, we will not call it meditation. All those doubts have to be completely annihilated. Chitva Darshanam Tattva Darshanam this experience in itself is called the experience of the ultimate tattva darshanam. This is called true realization. Of course, the reason I say true realization is uh, it has become quite common usage when people say that uh, Swami today I realized, oh, congratulations, I am speaking to a realized master now, right? No, 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 not that realization. I just realized that there is some little thing. We call that also as realization. Therefore, I am mentioning that the true realization is when there is a mind which is awakeful, intellect which is awake, and yet it has merged itself into that pure consciousness. And without the mediation of that intellect, there is the experience. 
you cannot even call it experience. Because to call something as an experience, you need an object and you need the subject to experience the object. Here at this level, the object and the subject are be, have become one, there is no difference. To put it in layman's terms, the example is like somebody sucking on his own thumb. What is the object of experience? You know, there is this beautiful portrait, beautiful uh, painting of Lord Krishna on a leaf in deluge waters. It is called Vata Patra. Vata is that uh, uh, leaf, Patra, that leaf. Shai is the one who is sleeping. Usually, you find them in the Tanjore painting. What is that Krishna doing there if you observe? He is sucking on his own toe, the right toe, he is sucking on it. So, what is that indicating? That he is Paramatma, Paramatma relishing and reveling in his own self. There is no duality there. Chitva darshanam tu tattva darshanam. This is called the true realization. And now you have to abide in that conscious, undisturbed. I know most of you buy yogurt outside, but do you know how easy it is to make yogurt? What is the process? What? Hey Rama. <laughs> huh. Boil milk. Little cool too. Little above room temperature, warm, lukewarm. And then add that culture or the seed or the culture or the bacteria and then let it settle. What happens if every 20 minutes or 15 minutes you pull it out and you know check uh, is it settled or not? What will happen to that yogurt? It does not form at all, it will curdle. But then the, it, it does not have the same kind of culture and texture in it. Similarly, when you sit in the seat of meditation, the final abidance has to be firm. That even when you step out of that meditative equilibrium, you carry forward that alone. And for that abidance, it takes few more intense efforts. Does it make sense? Now I stop. Any more questions? <clears throat> because the next is the easy part. As the confusing part is about that experience. How to reach to that experience, that method is given in the next few shlokas, very methodically. Online any questions? Oh, they are ans answering each other. <laughs> hey guys, answer each other later. <clears throat> His question is, you said I, uh, we do not need the intellect for the final experience. If I am not wrong, I did mention that both mind and intellect are not required. What I am trying to indicate is the entire antakkarana, mana, buddhi, chitta, ahankara, none of those are required 
as a mediation to experience it. That is why it is called immediate experience, not a mediated experience, immediate without any mediation. Yeah, right. Um, one of the previous topics that we were talking about, not right now, but a little bit further back, we were talking about these experiences that we have where we're completely withdrawn, but then we come back. You can There, in that, in that earlier step, if I am not wrong, you are functioning still as the mind and intellect in between. After you withdraw and come back, you are still functioning as the mind and intellect. But here, you are no more functioning as the mind and intellect. You are functioning with the mind and intellect in the appropriate environment and you know when to withdraw it. That only she can define. No, because we were, we were talking about the can we take it offline? Yeah. yeah. So that people are thinking, what, what that state? <laughs> <coughs> that is defined by you, whatever that we'll, we'll discuss that. No other questions online? No, thank you. Okay. Arjuna did not reach moksha after Bhagavad Gita, he reached to a state of clarity. His in, in his own words, Nashto Mohaha Smritihi Labdhaha, this comes in 18th chapter. Nashto Mohaha Smritihi Labdhaha, Karishye Vachanam Tava, all my delusion has been cleared, I have recovered, my system has been rebooted, Smritihi Labdhaha. I am now aware of my responsibilities. I have absolute clarity and no confusion as to what has to be done by me. Therefore, whatever you have guided me so far, I know that it is the right path, therefore I will be executing it. He did not talk about moksha. End of 18th Yes, end of his life they all go to Swarga. There is a Swarga Rohana chapter and they are all, they all grow towards that. Uh, what is the most uh, sattvic of the Antakkarana Chatushtaya? There are four aspects, Mana, Buddhi, Chitta, Ahankara. Which one of them is the most subtlest one? Because each one of them can be sattvic, tamasic and rajasic. So to identify it from the, that standpoint will be difficult, but I can tell you what is the most subtlest one of all of them. So that would be the buddhi. There is a difference between chitta and chaitanya. Chitta here means memory, chit means consciousness, so that is the difference. And what is the other question? Whose question was that? Okay, one more question. Okay, I'll talk to her personally. Oh, off record. Uh huh. <coughs> 
the ashtanga yoga portion here in the upadesha sara is when we are talking about the prana bandhana prana bandhana when you do the pranayama <coughs> to break the patterns of the mind so that is the portion where we are talking about the ashtanga yoga no it has been addressed last class we addressed that that's the question okay om shante 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 hi hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om